Welcome back to All This Math. This is Professor Parker. For today's lesson, we're gonna get into some more work with fractions, all right? Specifically, we're gonna deal with some Eureka Math from third grade, module five, lesson number 14. Third grade, module five, lesson number 14, all right? Now, here are our instructions. We're gonna do three things, right? Basically, we're gonna draw a number bond, right? Based on the fraction that we're given, which is fourths. We're gonna draw a number bond. We're going to, and a number bond is like, is when you take an, a whole amount and you break it down into smaller pieces. And the fact that we're using number bonds is a good thing at this early age because when your children get into a chemistry class, right? They're gonna to have to deal with bonds. They're gonna to have to deal with atoms and you know different atoms from different elements that combine to form molecules, which really make up all of the things around us, which is consists of matter. And it also shows how math is directly connected to other subjects, such as chemistry, right? So we're gonna deal with some, we're gonna create a number bond, right? Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna partition, and that's an important word, partition. We need to make sure that our children understand what the word partition means. To partition something basically just means is to cut it up or subdivide it into smaller sections. Like you could partition a room, right? You might have a room that you want to divide up, right? And you can hang a curtain from the ceiling and that's a partition, right? Um, a wall is a partition. A wall that separates two bedrooms or two rooms in a house. A wall is a partition. So we do the same thing on a fraction strip. We can show how we cut up a fraction strip, right? Using partitions. But we're gonna partition the fraction strip, and a fraction strip is just basically a picture of a rectangle, right? It looks like a rectangular strip, and we're gonna cut it up into smaller pieces, and those smaller pieces are the fractional pieces. Partition the fraction strip to show unit fraction. Now, we probably already know what a unit fraction from previous videos, but a unit fraction is basically just an equal part of an object. When an object is cut up or broken down into equal parts, one of those parts is called the unit fraction. So if you take an object and you cut it, matter of fact, you know, if you take a hoagie and you cut it into halves, right? The unit fraction is one half because you cut it into two pieces. So the unit fraction is one half. If you cut it up into three pieces because you want to share with two other people, right? It's not just you, it's two other people which you want to share, but everybody get down and get a grub, right? So the unit fraction in that case would be one third, right? Unit fraction is one third in that situation. All right, so we're gonna get into that too. And then we're gonna label the fractions on a number line, on a number line. That's like the big deal. That's like the, the most important part of this lesson, lesson number 14, is having our children be able to understand how to count using fractions and where, where fractions actually are on a number line. Because typically when we're introduced to number lines, we're introduced to integers or whole numbers, not necessarily fractions. So we want, them, want the children to also be able to see where are, where are fractions located on a number line? All right, so let's get into this. All right, so we're dealing with fourths. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna draw a number bond. Now this is how you draw a number bond. What you wanna do is you're gonna start with a big circle. Start with a big circle. Now that big circle represents the whole thing. The big circle represents the whole thing. So the whole thing is one whole thing. So inside that big circle, you put a one, all right? Now, the question is how many bonds, how many pieces are gonna be attached to this whole thing? Or how many pieces would this whole thing be broken up into? Because we're dealing with fourths, that means we're gonna attach four pieces or there will be four bonds, right? If this was thirds, there would be three. If this was halves, there would be two. If it was fifths, there would be five. And so on and so forth, all right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw one, two, three, four, and put Small circle right there, smaller circle right there, smaller circle right there, smaller circle right there. Now, the unit fraction, if I'm dealing with fourths, is one fourth. So inside each of these small circles, I'm gonna put one fourth. And I don't know if you can really see that that good in this video, so I'm gonna use black just to make sure. So we got one fourth in here. We got one fourth in here. We got one fourth in here, and we got one fourth in here. All right, so this is our number bond. All right, so we're done with that part. Now, we gotta partition a fraction strip and show unit fractions. And then we gotta do a number line. So this is what we're gonna do. I'm going to draw a fraction strip, all right? 
but to draw a fraction strip. Now, a fraction strip is just basically a rectangle. Right? Rectangle. That's our fraction strip. All right? Now, underneath of it, what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a number line. Now, the number line should be just as wide as the fraction strip. Keep that in mind. The number line should be just as wide as the fraction strip. All right? So the number line is going to look like this. It's going to be like that. So that's the beginning of it. And then over here, that's going to be the end of it. And I'm going to draw a line like that. All right? So here's our number line. Here's our fraction strip. Here's our number line. Here's our fraction strip. Here's our number line. Here's our fraction strip. Now, we're dealing with fourths. We're dealing with fourths. So that means we need to cut the fraction strip up into four equal parts because our unit fraction is one fourth. All right? Now, the way I like to do that is, since I'm dealing with an even number of pieces, I first cut it in half. So I find halfway, which is about right there, and I draw a vertical line. I cut it in half first, right? Now, that's halves, but we got to go to fourths. But a fourth or a quarter is just half of a half, right? So then I go to each half, and I cut that in half. And I cut this one in half. And now I got one-fourth, 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 and one-fourth. I got four quarters. I got four quarters, I got four-fourths, right? All together, right? Which make up the whole thing. Now on the number line, I'm gonna draw hash marks on the number line that are directly below these partitions. I'm gonna draw one right here. I'm gonna draw one right here. And I'm gonna draw one right here. Now, one thing I neglected to write that I'm gonna write now is at the beginning of the number line that we're using, we start at zero. And at the end of the number line, because we're dealing with a fraction, we're dealing with fractions rather, we put a one, right? Because the whole object is worth one or equivalent to one. So we start at zero, we end at one. We start at zero, we end at one. Now, the question is, what fraction should go here, 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 and even actually right here and right here? Now, because our unit fraction is one fourth, every one of our fractions on this number line is gonna have a denominator of four. Because our unit fraction is one fourth, every fraction on this number line is gonna have a denominator of four. That's always the case. Whatever the unit fraction is, whether it's one-fifth, one-sixth, one-seventh, one-eighth, one-twentieth, one-thirtieth, it don't matter. It could be one-hundredth. Your denominator on your number line for each equal part is going to be equal to that unit fraction. Right? So right now we're dealing with fourths. So that means every one of these locations is going to have a denominator of fourths. So this is what it'll look like. I got fraction bar with a four at the bottom. Then I come down, fraction bar, four at the bottom. Then I come down, over under here, fraction bar, four at the bottom. Then I come down, fraction bar, four at the bottom. Then I come down, fraction bar, four at the bottom. And now for the next thing, we're gonna label all these fractions. Now we gotta figure out what the numerators are. Remember the numerators are the top numbers in a fraction, right? They tell me how many pieces we're focused on. The denominator tells me how many equal pieces there are all together within that object, all right? So, we start here. We start at zero. So we ask ourselves, how many fourths is that right there? It's no fourths, because we add zero. So that represents zero fourths. That would be zero fourths. That's how many fourths that is, right? Then we go to this one. Now, remember, you're not counting lines. You're counting spaces. That's a very common error that young people will make. They want to count lines. And it kind of makes sense that they would try to do that, but remind them that they should be counting spaces, not lines. They should be counting spaces. All right? So I got one space right here. So after that, that means I have one-fourth. Each space is worth a fourth. So right now, I'm counting by fourths. And then I got another space, which gives me Two fourths. I got one space, two spaces. That's two spaces, so each space is worth a fourth, so I got two fourths. So I put two fourths right there. And then I keep counting, because that was one fourth, two fourths, three. Three what? Three fourths. So I got three fourths right there, right? And then I keep going, because I had one fourth, two fourths, three fourths. The last space, that's my fourth fourth. 
So now I got four fourths. So now I've answered all the questions. We drew our number bond. That's this right here, right? Start out with one, and then we draw our lines and draw our smaller circles, and then we put the unit fractions inside. There's four of them, right? Just like we got four of these up here, four fourths up here. We also partitioned our fraction strip. We did that right there. To show the unit fractions, unit fractions are one fourth, one fourth, one fourth, and one fourth, right? There's four of them. And then we labeled the fractions on the number line. We draw a number line, which corresponds to the, to the fraction strip, and then we labeled those. So this is zero fourths, this is one fourth, this is two fourths, this is three fourths, and this is four fourths. And notice how four fourths and one are in the same place because four fourths is equivalent to one. Four fourths is equivalent to one, all right? Four fourths is equivalent to one. Whenever you have a fraction that's got the same numerator and denominator, that fraction is equivalent to one. It don't matter if it's five fifths, it don't matter if it's 10 tenths, it don't matter if it's 100 hundredths. That fraction is gonna be equivalent to one because that's the whole thing. You're dealing with the whole thing, right? The whole piece, right? So here, like, we got one, two, three, four, four of those fourths all together is the whole thing. All right, so that's another key fact that you should memorize, all right? And help your children to memorize that too. Whenever you have a fraction that's got the same numerator and denominator, that fraction is equal to the number one. It's equal to the whole object or a whole piece, all right? All to, of all the pieces put together, rather. All right, and if you got a numerator of zero, something else to memorize. If you have a numerator of zero, that means that that fraction is equal to zero. It don't matter if it's zero fourths, Zero fifths, zero eighths, zero hundredths, zero millionths. It don't matter. All right? So that's about it for this. Something else I forgot to mention. I got Benjamin Banneker with me today. Right? For those of us that might not know, Benjamin Banneker is one of the greatest math mathematicians of all time. Not just one of the greatest black mathematicians of all time, but one of the greatest mathematicians of all time that ever walked the face of the earth um, from Maryland. Uh, also, he was a wheat farmer. He was a wheat farmer. He was an astronomer. He published an almanac back in the 18th century in the 1700s. Um, he also helped to, or was responsible for creating the layout for Washington, D.C., the capital of the United States. So the brother did a lot of things. He got into a whole lot, he was very successful, um, also was a writer, you know, um, and believed in promoting the humanity of people of African descent during chattel slavery in the United States of America while chattel slavery was taking place. So that's why I got Benjamin Banneker on my chest. And we don't also keep in mind, we don't have to wait until Black History Month to represent and honor and promote our black heroes. So keep that in mind. And also, if you don't know as much about Benjamin Banneker, please just do your Googles. Go find out some more information about the brother. All right. So that's about it. Um, and again, this was Eureka Math, Grade 3, Module 5, Lesson 14. And I hope you learned something. Now, go practice the problem set. Practice some, home, some homework problems. And until next video, you be well. Peace.